Alright, what's up everyone? This is my second take doing this video, so hopefully it'll go a little faster. Um, I'm going to try to quickly go through my entire Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K rig and all the information that I think might be useful for someone who's building a rig or just cool to look at if you want to see somebody else's rig. Because when I was um, searching to buy the camera, I know I was looking at everybody's rigs and it was very, very fun. So, I'm going to show off mine. This video is not going to be super high quality, but in the future I do plan on releasing some higher quality ones. And here we go, here's the rig. I also just realized that I took some pieces off during my last take and did not add them back on, but it's okay. Because this video is kind of just random talking about it. It's not supposed to be anything super high quality, so this is what we got going here. Um, it's not super overdone, but it is kind of overdone, but I mean, that's what I like to do. Um, let's get a shot of the switch in here. Uh, okay, so this is what was mounted to there, and we'll talk about it in a little bit. But let's start from the bottom and go up. So we're going to start here with the tripod. I'll also talk about my editing machine over there as well. We got the Manfrotto 290 Lite that I've had for a number of years and this thing is beautiful. I believe it was 175. Um, my entire camera rig, not including the tripod, the stuff I bought for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera has totaled 3700 now. And of course I bought everything like quickly because I just graduated so I got a lot of graduation money. So, um, and I've been saving up for a while because I don't normally buy things for myself. So, yeah, I cashed out on this bad boy, and I pretty much got a lot of accessories very quickly, so you could definitely survive just by spending probably like 2300 on this thing, get it get it running nicely. Alright, so yeah, th we had the Manfrotto tripod with the nice fluid head, and let's start with under here. We have the small rig base plate with the rod holes, so you can um, do things like shoulder mounts and put... Um, you know, follow focus setup, or a mat box in front of the camera, and I have these 15 millimeter um, short poles just to mount my V-mount battery right here, my newer V-mount. Um, and I have two. I ordered a two pack of these really awesome small rig things right here. These rod mounts that have screw holes on all four sides. Sorry, I took a pause right there. My cat is chilling, dreaming, making weird sounds. Um, yeah, so I have the other mount here, which is actually mounted to my small rig. Pretty much everything in my setup here is small rig because I love that brand. Uh, we have the small rig V-mount mount plate, which is screwed into the, the rod mount plate there. And then we have the 95 watt hour, which is the half strength or the half uh, battery life, newer battery. And this cost about like, I don't know, was it 80 bucks? And I tr really trust newer because I have a lot of newer products like this mic stand. Um, most of my mic setup, I've had that for like five years and it has worked beautifully the entire time. I love Newer and even this light that I've had for a number of years, it's amazing. That was only like 20 bucks. Newer is the cheap but high quality brand and I always trust them so I highly recommend Newer. If anybody is watching this and actually thinking of getting a build or some camera pieces, definitely don't steer away from Newer and Small Rig. Small Rig is amazing. So anyway, that's that set up there. And then let's go ahead and talk about the side of the camera right here. Here is the small rig USB-C and HDMI clamp. This is way more of a necessity than you might think. It keeps your cables super snug and you never have to worry about them ripping out and damaging your ports. And this cable right here that you can barely see is a WIPU to, well, you know, um, WIPU power, which goes to this D-tap, which goes right into the battery. And the battery itself has a little check thing. You can check your battery life, and it has somewhere on here, right next to the D-tap, 
a USB port where you can charge your phone. Um, okay, let's move on through here, and then up into the side here, we have a tiny headphone jack, 3.5mm headphone jack, and a mic input, which is connected to my Rode Video Mic Go, sitting on a cold shoe mount that is a part of the cage. Um, and of course, I have the standard all the way around small rig cage on the camera itself. Um, let's see here. Okay, we can move on to the handle. I have the $60 aluminum handle, which is a little bit cheaper in cost than the wood one, but the build quality is amazing. I personally don't like the look of the wooden one, and I don't really like the idea of that, um, that grip style. I think this is just more suited for me. And I really like rubber for grip here, and this rubber is beautiful quality. So it sixty dollars seems expensive for um, a side grip, but I actually love it, and I do not regret it at all because it also has these screws up here. You can adjust it up and down. It's got these holes for straps everywhere. It has an Allen key underneath. I don't feel like taking it out. It's kind of hard to get out. There's an Allen key underneath there, and of course, like I said, you can mount the SSD. So right here, I have these small rig. Samsung portable T5 SSD mount holding my Samsung T5 one terabyte SSD and of course plugged in and right here I have my cable management that I am very proud of it's just one velcro strap holding together my HDMI cable my USB-C and my waipu power making it a perfect snug fit no loose cables around my camera no loose cables around these parts ever. Um, yeah, so we got that. Let's move on to the front of the camera. Here I have my 50mm 1.8 prime lens with an ultraviolet filter on it. My lens collection is seriously lacking. Um, they cost a lot of money, and that's just something I never really ended up getting throughout my years of using my Canon 80D, which is what I'm filming this on, which is why the footage is going to look a little grainy. I'm, I can only open to 3.5 on this, and I'm at 5,000 ISO. But yeah, this video is not supposed to be super high quality. I'll make those in the future, but for right now, I just want to make it because I want to. And it's kind of on a whim. It's 4.13 in the morning. I had a busy day today, and I will tomorrow, so I just wanted to get this out because I'm very excited that my rig is done, for now at least. I should have mentioned that in the beginning. This is the completed rig so far. There will be more added to it. I, of course, I'm going to have more lenses. I'm going to buy more batteries, uh, more Sony NPF batteries, and more V-mount batteries. Um, a shoulder rig I'll get, and I'll get a, a gimbal in the future and a better shotgun mic that captures beautiful audio. But for now, this is the completed rig, and I probably won't be spending more for at least a couple months. Um, yeah, so that's that, the front. And then right here... Actually, you know what, let's spin to the back first. Um, we have the small rig top handle, which I actually use way more than I thought I would. I originally was not going to buy this. Oh, sorry. Let's go over here. Um, I love this thing. I pretty much always hold the camera by it. There's a cold shoe mount right here for vertical mounting, and then there's a cold shoe mount at the top here, which is where my monitor is connected. And, of course, there is the very... Easy access Allen key that comes out surprisingly easily. Are we a little overexposed in here? Slightly, I can bring the ISO down. Um, I absolutely love this thing. Oh yeah, and the side handles, they mount using the areas on the cage that look like this. These big screw holes here. with the tiny holes on the side. So if you're gonna invest in one of those handles, it's beautiful. They have mounts for other cameras too and like different ways to mount it, but that's the one that I got because it fits this cage nicely and it's very, very secure. You can put your Allen key through these holes to super tighten it. It's beautiful. I love the the design of this stuff. It's, it's actually great. Um, makes me very proud of the filmmaking industry and community for how awesome their products are. Um, yeah, so that's that. Let's move up here. I have the Andy Scene third-party monitor mount, which is not the one that came with my monitor. This is a very high-quality monitor mount. My only issue with it is that the cold shoe mount square is kind of small. 
So you always, I don't, I don't know if I'll be able to get this, but there's always a little wiggle that's not supposed to be there, which annoys me, but it's still super snug. And I should mention that because this rig is so heavy for this t tripod, uh, the tripod handles it surprisingly well, but it also kind of makes the, um, makes the pans very smooth. So let's go here real quick makes the pans extremely smooth because it's so heavy and easy to control so I actually like that a lot um, okay moving on actually I'll just keep that low we'll talk about the monitor now this is the Feel World 279 not the S version which means there's no SDI output I have it hooked up with my 90 degree angle HDMI that again wraps around the front of the camera perfectly um, and it outputs the camera outputs literally everything. So uh, my three function buttons on the camera are set to, the first one is set to false color, which is what I use for exposure here. Um, looks weird on the camera. Uh, and then the second one I have set to my cinematic LUT so I can see what my footage might look like when I grade it. So I don't have to stare at a flat image the whole time. It's beautiful. I usually use that for playing back footage. And then I have my third function button set to focus peaking and all of that gets fed to the monitor directly. And this monitor is 2200 nits, 7 inches, it's, so it's nice and big, you get to see your detail pretty well. And you can see it when it's being hit by direct sunlight because of how bright that backlight is. However, when you have it set up all the way, the monitor does get hot and it does suck up battery life. It does natively take Sony NPF batteries and it lasts a few hours with that, um, which is great. And those batteries are cheap and super high quality, so I like them a lot. And there are function buttons up here where you can do your own focus assist on the monitor, which means if you buy this monitor for another camera, um, you can, like for example, this um, ADD DSLR, you can pretty much give your camera that um, focus peaking ability because it's built into the monitor. And it also has false color, which is what I have it set to, which is cool because sometimes I can put on false color there if I don't want it on my screen down here. Um, Okay, so that's that, and right here, I have the mount that actually came with the Feel World monitor, because it's not the best one, I got that third party one, which is a higher quality one, however, it works great, it's, a, it's got a cold shoe mount down here, uh, it works great for attaching other things, like a light, because there are like infinite movement possibilities here, with uh, the angling of the light, and pretty much anything you want to do um, with attachments. It just has a screw in there. It, there's a screw at the end. Right in there. Come on, focus. Right in there. Goes to pretty much anything, and my light has a screw at the bottom of it. So it could go in there, be a nice blasting light. Depending on what you're doing, that could be useful. Um, and yeah, of course, this whole thing is pretty overdone right now, because this is just everything, so I can showcase it. Um, right here is the small rig cold shoe mount extension so there's a cold shoe mount right here and it just kind of extends out very nice for extra accessories that you might need and then of course I have another handle which just came in today a lot of the stuff just came in today which is why I'm so hyped about it and the rig is finally set up the way I want it um, so when I go handheld I have both handles here for very stabilized shots um, I'm very very hyped about that I like it a lot and then, of course, I have the brand new phone setup that I'm very happy about. I don't know what the heck this brand is. Um, Yulonzi phone mount that is very cool. It locks. I don't know if I mentioned this. I think I did. But um, the links to everything is going to be in my Amazon list, which I'll link in the description down below. I put everything I bought on that Amazon list. Uh, I, it's not affiliate links, so I don't get... Uh, any money if you buy from that link so don't worry about it um, but yeah everything I bought for this setup is pretty much on that list so as of right now I have my phone set up here which could be useful uh, of course I could charge it with the v-mount battery if needed this could be useful for I don't know if you're shooting a sports game or something or you're shooting a, a still shot or you're just sitting there for a long time your phone can be right here you know, it's just convenient, but for what I'm using it for, it's very convenient. 
because I have this battery right here, the way I have it mounted. I like it mounted this way. It's more compact. And you can very quickly adjust things and record on your phone with the phone app. It does cost $5, this app, but it is seamless. Everybody loves this app. It's probably like the best camera connector app out there. Way better than Canon's in my opinion. And I do like Canon's, but I just absolutely love this one here. It's very responsive and works beautifully. So that's my entire rig setup at the moment for power. The monitor is powered by the Sony batteries. And before, the, hey, let me tell you about this cable. This is connected to a dummy battery, which goes into the bottom of the camera. Um, wait, why am I at such a low ISO? Yeah, so this goes all the way to the bottom of the camera out. And I used to power my camera before the V-mount battery. I would power it with this Sony NPF directly to the camera and the monitor. So my battery life was way better than the normal LPE6 Canon batteries, but there's a DC out in this battery, this special one, which I really love. Still at full. Um, because I can use it to power the, mo the monitor and the camera at the same time, so that's also good for running gun shoots if you want to go shoot something real quick, but you still want the monitor. Um, what else was I going to say? The SD card and the CFast card go in here, but I'm not, I'm literally never going to use those. Um, because, you know, I record directly to the SSD, which is the cheapest and best route to go by far. I believe there was more I wanted to say, but I don't know. Yeah, the the um, handles have an awesome cold shoe mount, which is how my phone is chilling up there. I think it's super cool. So this is the rig. Very, very nice. And real quick, I'm going to talk about this thing that I got that somebody commented on a previous video. Um, that they got this, and they used it to mount their NPF battery those batteries to their camera so I could just like if I want to have like only my camera for a very lightweight shoot um, I could just plop this on top of there and then use my dummy battery by plugging it into the battery and this will just mount that one and hold it it's got the nice velcro and it's got a screw on the back which is very easy to um, screw into things and my Fuel World monitor actually came with a screw that has threads on both sides and an Allen key um, thing in the middle there so you could twist it and pretty much put a screw in anything so you can attach like two pretty much anything that have the standard filmmaking uh, screw size. I don't know what size it actually is but uh, yeah that's that. I got my, my SD card beeping at me. So real quick, I'm going to go over my chargers here. I have a nice, uh, what is this, Pixel charger that I got. I originally had a micro USB charger for my NPF batteries. Do not get those. They're a ripoff. They suck, and they last like two seconds. Um, yeah, don't get them. Always buy one that is DC charged like this one which is on the Amazon list, and for my VMOB batter, I have this Kastner, Kastner, I mean, uh, just standard DTAP charger, which is very nice, and then I have my Canon LPE6 chargers chilling in here, along with my batteries, um, and my LPE6 batteries, the whole camera does fit in here, and my ADD goes here, my lens goes here, my light goes here. Um, and then down here I have a little case with all my screws and Allen keys in it. That I open quite a bit. And I also have my battery door in there which I can put on after this because I'm going to be using the V-mount battery for now. Um, here's my long telephoto lens and the camera protectors. And in here, I have my variable ND filter for my lens, which is a lifesaver. This thing is super freaking cool. I just got it recently. I have a pair of headphones for monitoring audio, Sharpie, because you never know. And I have a couple more things in here. Some Velcro straps, um, a case for my neutral, or not my ND filter, my uh, ultraviolet filter, if I ever want to take that off for some reason. 
Um, and then in here is where I actually put my monitor when I travel with the camera. And I don't know exactly where I'm going to put the essentials, like the grips, when I bring them along. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with those, but they'll go somewhere in the bag. I'll probably end up taking out the telephoto lens because I really don't use it that much, or the light. I don't need everything wherever I go, of course, but this bag is wonderful. It also carries the tripod very nicely on the outside. You actually lift this thing down, pull this thing down, and the legs sit in there and get secured by that. So this bag holds everything. It's great. Um, I could fit pretty much that whole rig in there, no problem. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. So there's the rig. There's the bag. Here's my filmmaking drawer here with my extra equipment. Um, the bag actually sits in here, so it's easy access, and everything, you know, stays clean in my room and stuff. I have some random stuff for, uh, photography, some lens add-ons I never use because they're garbage. My monitor box, so if I ever take my monitor off, I'll probably have it set there. Some screen protectors down there, a bunch of cables. Um, that is the power cable for the camera if you just want to power it and keep it running. Uh, there's the crappy Sony MPF charger I have, and yeah, this video is long, but it's fine because I just wanted to make it. Nobody's probably going to watch this. I'm probably the only person ever who's going to hear this part of the video. But anyway, um, here is my PC, if anybody's interested. I This is my first baby before my Black Magic. Well, actually, my ADD, I guess, would be my first baby. The thing in my hands right now. Um, yeah, I love my ADD, but it is nothing compared to that bad boy. I love that thing. And here's my PC. So, yeah, the that whole th setup there with the bag and the chargers, that's about $3,700 worth. Um, if you're looking into getting your own build and super decking it out, that's kind of the price you're looking at. Uh, at least to get to that point. Here's my beautiful PC that does some insane stuff for me, and I also am a motion designer, so I do a lot of um, editing, uh, visual effects, motion design, stuff like that, so I, I need this strong PC, and of course gaming. Um, here are the specs of my computer, if you are interested by any chance, probably not. Like I said, I'm probably the only person watching this. Um, here are my PC specs, pretty much everything. I got my cooling and my storage and everything on here. 64 gigs of RAM, still not enough. The best thing about my computer is that right there. I got the 3950X when it first came out, and I never get close to bottlenecking that freaking thing, dude. That is the best processor I had ever seen in a computer, and I do not regret buying it for a second. It was definitely sold out for a long time for a reason because that thing is beautiful and I have my lights going around my keyboard mouse but yeah that that processor is ridiculous the 16 core 32 thread beast and over here is my disk speed test which I ran for my um what was it my new NVMe uh, M.2 SSD which I just put in today that I actually purchased it's in there right there I just purchased it for editing in 6k so I can view the file at a higher resolution so I can actually view it in 6k while editing I can already do it at one fourth no problem it's never the computer that's bottlenecking it's always the speed of the SD or of the SSD the Samsung SSD so what I'm gonna do for editing in 6k is now drag it over to my M.2 SSD, and then I will have write speeds that look like this. And you really can't beat that, that is ridiculous. This is way faster than my other M.2, which is what my, um, uh, which is what my OS is on, my operating system. I'm debating on pushing it over to this one because this one's way newer and faster. But I mean, this is seven times roughly seven times the speed of the Samsung T5. So dragging my footage over to this and then editing off of this is going to be beautiful and I'm very excited. Anyway, so that is my entire loadout for filmmaking, I guess. 
and just my career. My editing setup, my PC, my room, quick shot of my room, the, the builds, the K-pop wall, because I'm a loser like that. I actually have to go get my hair dyed tomorrow because I did it today and it's not done so I'm not going to show it on the camera. Uh, my cat, the essentials. Uh, yeah, that is everything. I'll stop rambling. 25 minutes. I'll be surprised if somebody gets to the end of this. If you get to the end of this, comment below and let me know so I can give you some love. Anyway, that is my finished build and a higher quality of it a higher quality video of it will come soon. Thanks for watching. Peace.